when we think about the last weeks of the war in the Pacific, there are so many different perspectives to bring to bear. You know, there is the perspective of the individual soldier or Marine who's imagining that he might be part of the landing effort. There's the perspective of the planners who have been charged with making estimates about the demands of that operation and, and the resources that it will consume and the lives that it will cost. And then there is the perspective of the, the group of scientists and military personnel who have been pursuing the new atomic weapon successfully tested at the Manhattan Project in July of 1945. Um, and now, August of 1945, President Truman instructs that it be used against civilian targets in an effort to end the war as quickly as possible. That decision is one of the most consequential and the most well-known uh, of 20th century military history. But there are always new ways to get into it. Um, it has produced so many documents and reports and different angles. One of the most interesting documents that's not nearly as well known that pertains to the use of the atomic weapon comes from Luis Alvarez, who's a scientist who's part of the Manhattan Project and who was actually part of the mission that dropped the bomb on Hiroshima the first time that this new weapon had been used against human targets. And he writes his young son a letter on August 6th, 10 miles off the Japanese coast at 28,000 feet. So he's narrating from almost as close as you can get to this epical moment. Uh, and it's a fascinating letter to go through kind of paragraph by paragraph and close read. And in the very opening, he tells his son, this is the first grown up letter I've ever written you. And you know, the man who's writing it has, has just been buffeted by the shockwave of the atomic explosion that has you know, nearly incinerated uh, an entire Japanese city. And he is insightful enough to understand how this has dramatically reshaped warfare. He says, the, the days of large bombing raids with several hundred planes are finished. A single plane disguised as a friendly transport can now wipe out a city. That means to me that nations will have to get along together in a friendly fashion or suffer the consequences of sudden sneak attacks which can cripple them overnight. Then he moves into to talking to his young son about what it's like to go into combat for the first time. And he notes that he had attended briefings about bombing missions with the Royal Air Force before in Britain. But as he says, it is quite different when you are to go on the mission yourself. You know, here is a physicist who now finds himself a part of the, the bombing mission uh, to use this weapon for the first devastating time. And he describes exactly what's happened. And it's interesting that he notes how much of it they had anticipated. These are physicists, and they have been thinking about the bomb, the yield, and its impact for years. He says, a few seconds after we completed the turn, the plane was hit with the blast wave from the explosion. It gave the ship a couple of good jolts but only about what we expected. All this is part of their calculations. He also gives us uh, about the most highly informed first person account of the bomb blast that you could imagine. Uh, and Alvarez says it was awe inspiring. Already the smoke cloud was up to 35 or 40,000 feet. The ground was covered with a layer of smoke so that the city was blotted out from view. So it's this astonishingly immediate depiction of one of the most consequential decisions of the 20th century, certainly for you know, military and diplomatic policy, that to become the first nation to use a weapon of this power against civilian targets uh, during a war. And you can see Alvarez kind of grappling with the complexities of being part of this. And then the fact that he, he writes this to a young son with the awareness that it may be, you know, some years before the son can read and understand exactly the, the import of the letter. But then he writes it at 28,000 feet, you know, moments after the bomb has gone off. And that he is physically present and is, you know, physically at some risk. There is a PS to the letter that says um, that the pilots saw flak bursting a mile below the aircraft. So there is anti-aircraft fire, although Alvaro says they apparently didn't have their good anti-aircraft in the region. But 
he feels himself personally at risk. He's gone into combat for the first time and, and then grappling with the consequences of what he knows has happened on the ground.